Hello everybody and thanks for watching this video. In this video we'll be going over a statement of cash flow and working capital analysis. Um, it's appropriate that we discuss these two topics together because it's essentially cash flow that um, changes our working capital and uh, in order to understand that we first must be able to create a statement of cash flow which is the third of the three important uh, financial documents that we'll be looking at um, well in this course and, and in most other courses uh, but up until now we haven't discussed it much so today uh, in this video we're going to be describing exactly what it is how it's used how to create one and various uh, metrics related to uh, the statement of cash flow uh, more specifically, this class's learning objectives uh, are going to be uh, that we're going to define the purpose of the Statement of Cash Flow, or SCF. Uh, we're going to be able to identify the three sections in a, in a cash flow statement. Um, we're going to explain how changes in current assets and current liabilities affect net income and, as a result, cash flow. And we're also going to create a statement, uh, uh, a, uh, a cash flow statement in our, our, our Thursday seminar. We're also going to be able to define working capital, uh, explain some uses or sources that increase and decrease working capital. We're also uh, on Thursday going to be able to prepare a changes to working capital uh, statement and identify the overall net change uh, to our working capital, but also, you know, uh, some of the major sources and, or uses of cash that have created our working capital. Uh, we're going to be uh, able to explain why cash does not increase by the amount of, uh, by an amount equal to net income, which I'm going to describe on the next slide. And uh, we're going to be able to explain whether the hospitality, uh, why the hospitality industry can operate on such a low current ratio. So before we define uh, what the cash flow statement is, it's important to understand why we're looking at cash flow here. Okay. Um, so on the left hand side here, I've got an income statement, a very small income statement. I've got a statement of retained earnings. And on the right hand side, I've got a balance sheet. Okay. So in this case, we're looking at the two, 2017 figures. Okay. You'll notice, well, first of all, one of the primary reasons why we want to understand cash flow is, um, so I'm just going to bring up my pen here, is, uh, you know, uh, we pay expenses with cash and cash flow. So it's important to understand, um, you know, how much cash we have um, and the various metrics that we can calculate based on our cash flow uh, to indicate whether or not uh, we're in a good financial position to be paying our expenses, for, uh, for example, interest. Uh, but also, the second reason we need to understand cash flow and the cash flow statement is because uh, you'll notice here the difference in our cash position between 2016 and 2017 has changed by $2,000. Okay, so uh, from what I can see, it has increased by $2,000, So, which is good. You know, our cash has increased uh, when our cash position has, has gotten better. However, if you look down here, okay, our net income uh, was $6,000. Now, if you, we have to understand the transition uh, between the two statements here. Okay, and we're going to use the statement of retained earnings to to show that. Okay, so um, where we connect the income statement and the balance sheet is through uh, um, re the retained earnings, but also cash. Okay, so right here uh, we have our beginning uh, retained earnings from 2016. We add our net income, uh, which is six thousand dollars. We'll call. Okay, uh, we're subtracting any dividends we paid out, and that means our ending retained earnings is $20,000, okay, which is seen right here on the balance sheet for 2017, okay. Um, using uh, double entry accounting, uh, we have to show, or you would think that, you know, our net, uh, our cash position would also improve by that $6,000 because our um, retained earnings is increasing, okay, minusing some dividends, but our net, uh, sorry, our cash is not increasing uh, by the same amount of our net income, okay. Uh, this is primarily because we have different accruals in um, accrual accounting, uh, some of which do not use cash, uh, for example, depreciation. Um, others are uh, liabilities that exist in the future and don't use cash. OK, um, so to truly understand, you know, why our cash position has changed from one period to another, we can't just look at our income statement and the statement of retained earnings because it doesn't explain that. 
we have to create what we call a statement of cash flow to truly understand why our cash has changed or our cash position has changed from one period to a next and that's really what we're talking about today So the statement of cash flow, uh, as, a, as a brief definition, is it just a, a, state, a financial statement showing the changes to our cash position or our cash balance from one period to another. Okay, uh, again, this is, re, uh, this is an important statement to be familiar with because cash is our most liquid asset. Um, it also provides us uh, with both liquidity okay but also flexibility to grow right um, and you know pay our pay our expenses um, while in previous uh, you know lectures and, and, and courses we look at um, we look at net income as the you know kind of the be all and end all measure of uh, profitability which is fairly true however um, net cash flow okay at the end of a particular period is the end measure of profitability okay so it's, it's a lot more accurate okay because uh, you they have a lot of flexibility in the preparation of an income statement uh, it includes a lot of non-cash expenses like depreciation um, to truly understand what kind of cash our business is generating and you know uh, how much we can use and how much flexibility we have we need to look at the net cash flow that's generated um, for a particular period okay it also tells us why our cash position has changed from one period to another. We can also do a quick cash flow analysis using some ratios to help us understand the level of liquidity, solvency, and financial flexibility we have in our operation. Um, they're uh, very similar to ratios you've seen before. Uh, for, inst for, for instance, uh, interest coverage. Okay, we have another interest coverage uh, using cash flow instead of uh, net income because um, at the end of the day, it's cash flow from operations that uh, pays our expenses. So a lot of our cash flow analysis um, can be a much more accurate picture of, um, again, both liquid, uh, liquidity, solvency, and financial flexibility, okay? And when I'm talking about uh, financial flexibility, um, that kind of brings in our working capital analysis, okay? So how much we could potentially grow or uh, how much cash we can use before putting ourselves in a bad position. So to recap here, our statement of cash flow is a financial statement that shows changes in cash position from one period to a next by looking at how specific items on the balance sheet uh, and in some cases income statement have changed uh, over time. More specifically, the statement of cash flow can help us address uh, several questions. Uh, I've listed some here. Uh, some of the important ones that I think um, should be touched on here are, you know, how much cash is generated or used from operations? Okay. In a lot of cases, that'll tell us um, what our free cash flow is or, you know, how much we could potentially grow without putting ourselves in a poor liquid um, position. Um, it, another one that I thought was fairly important was, you know, um, uh, how are investments going to be financed? Okay. Um, why is our cash, why is the increase in cash lower than the increase in net income? Okay. So we can understand what, uh, what has contributed to that discrepancy. And then um, uh, if we're receiving uh, new financing, um, you know, how it's going to be used or how it was used. Okay. Um, these are just some uh, the general questions. Um, we can also do a bit of a ratio analysis, as I had mentioned, to kind of um, tell whether we're in a good spot or a poor spot uh, based on the result of calculating a few ratios related to solvency, leverage, and um, uh, flexibility, if you will. So reporting by activities. So the cash flow statement is broken up into, um, into three different sections, if you will. Okay, those three sections um, relate to different kinds of activities uh, that our, our business has engaged in. Okay, so if you remember, um, activities produce sales but also consume resources, right? Uh, the connection between uh, producing sales and consuming resources at the end of the day is, is cash, right? So we report, um, the cash flow statement reports uh, cash receipts and cash payments by those three uh, three activities that our, our business engages in. Those three activities are operating activities, okay, so the day-to-day -day operations and earning-related earning related activities, 
of the business, uh, financing and investing. Okay, we look at the cash inflows and cash outflows within these specific activities to show um, the different changes uh, in our cash uh, through understanding the uses and uh, sources of cash that our, our business has generated. Okay, in the next slides, uh, next few slides, I'm going to uh, define and explain uh, financing and investing activities. So here we're going to define the uh, the two other categories on a um, statement of cash flow. Uh, the first of which is investing. Okay, so investing activities are those activities um, concerned with acquiring or disposing of non uh, non cash assets or um, non current assets. Right. So if we purchase a uh, you know a capital asset, which is a non current asset, obviously our our uh, non current assets are going up. Um, but did that use cash or did that uh, like did that use cash? Uh, did it not use cash? We have to understand how these investing activities have affected our cash position, right? Generally speaking, acquiring a non-current asset uses cash, and disposing or selling a non-current asset uh, asset um, uh, generates cash. Okay. We also have finance financing activities, which are activities that. Um, you know where we're we're um, paying down debt or we're servicing new debts to support business activities. So this involves looking at uh, non-current liabilities as well as uh, equity accounts as, uh, as sources of financing, and determining uh, whether those activities have either increased our cash position or decreased them. Generally speaking. Um, if we're seeing increases in common stock or if we're seeing increases in non-current liabilities, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, mortgage debt or a long-term loan, this is us going out and getting a loan or, you know, issuing new, new capital or common stock. Uh, this increases cash. Okay, so while it is debt, don't get me wrong, um, these are sources of cash. If we're paying down debt or we're buying back our stock, so that's treasury stock, uh, that means we are reducing cash or using cash to do that because we have to use cash to pay down our debt. Okay, um, and it's the combination of the, the three categories or the net ch the net uh, the net change in the three categories that um, that describes or shows us why our uh, cash position has changed from one period to another. So in understanding how um, you know, changes in different accounts uh, on a balance sheet affect um, cash flow or cash position. Um, investing and uh, financing activities, it, it, understanding how it affects cash is pretty simple and straightforward, right? For example, if you're increasing a, uh, a long-term liability, uh, this is uh, you servicing more debt, which means that you have, you know, you don't took out a loan and that increases cash because if you get a loan, you have more cash, right? So generally speaking, increases in long-term liabilities um, increase cash, okay? So when one, one goes up, the other one goes up as well. Financing activities is, is fairly straightforward as well. If we're seeing um, increases in equity, uh, in equity financing, uh, uh, it, uh, sorry, in uh, equity financing, which is investing, um, we're seeing an increase in cash position as well. And the same is true for decreasing, right? Uh, decreasing equity accounts and, and uh, non-current liability accounts, generally speaking, uh, uses cash. So it's a cash outflow. Uh, however, understanding how changes to current liabilities and current assets, uh, how that affects cash, it, it can be a bit more challenging, okay? For example, an increase to a current asset is technically um, to, uh, well, sorry, an increase to most uh, current asset accounts is actually a decrease in, in, in cash flow. Okay, uh, for example, uh, if um, our, if our accounts receivable are going up, that's cash we don't have, although we've made the sale for it. So if we're seeing increases in people that owe us money, that's actually a use of cash. Okay, or it, that hurts cash flow. So typically speaking. Okay, so uh, typically speaking, increases in current assets, typically, there is one exception, uh, decreases cash flow, okay? Uh, on the other hand, increases in current liability accounts, okay, for example, accounts payable, uh, increases cash flow.
Okay, I believe I put a um, a, uh, a summary table on the, uh, one of the next uh, few slides, uh, but this is a good rule of thumb to follow um, in that um, it's the, the current assets and current liabilities are very different um, than other accounts that we're going to look at in terms of you know how changes affect cash flow and it's our current uh, changes in our current assets and our current liabilities that are found in uh, operating activities okay uh, so um, when we're ch when we're showing changes to our uh, you know how investing activities or financing activities have a, have affect cash. It's pretty simple. However, when we're talking about operating activities, it can get a little tricky and a little confusing because it's almost opposite, right? Uh, but we're going to practice that today and on Thursday uh, to show you how to create one uh, our cash flow statement in good form by understanding how uh, changes in these accounts uh, affect cash. So here's uh, that chart that I was talking about uh, detailing uh, how changes in asset and liability accounts on the balance sheet uh, affect uh, cash flow. For example, uh, I'm going to bring up a pen here. Uh, assets that are increasing from one period to another, okay, uh, is technically a cash outflow, okay. Uh, on the other hand, if asset accounts are increasing, uh, sorry, decreasing. Okay, this is considered to be a cash inflow. So it's almost the opposite of what you would think it would be, um, or the opposite relationship, I should say. Liabilities, on the other hand, uh, when they increase, it's a cash outflow, sorry, inflow, okay? Uh, and when liabilities decrease, it's a cash outflow. It's the combination of um, these increases and decreases in our assets and liability accounts that create uh, the changes in our cash position while the um, while these changes can be kind of you know opposite of what we think they were uh, can have an opposite relationship uh, for example an increase in an asset is actually a you know cash decrease um, as long as we follow the general rules within this table then the changes to uh, our cash position based on changes in our assets and liability accounts will be fairly accurate So here's where we start to put together um, uh, a cash flow statement. Okay, to do this, we're going to be using the indirect method, which breaks down um, uh, cash activities into the three uh, the three um, activities that I was speaking about before. So operating uh, activities, uh, financing activities, and investing. Okay, uh, to do this, we need two consecutive periods of balance sheet information as well as an income statement. Okay. Uh, once we have those things, we start to we first um, show the net cash or the changes in uh, current uh, assets and liability accounts that have changed our that create our cash from operating activities. We then look at um, what is it called the changes in our non-current liabilities accounts and uh, non-current asset accounts to uh, find out the cash generated or used in our financing activities. We then look at the investing activities uh, and then what we do is we add up all of the cash generated or used from each of the activities and that is the dollar change. That is the uh, dollar change in cash. Now, if we take that dollar change in cash and we add it to the beginning balance of our cash from the previous balance sheet, um, we should get the ending cash balance for the most recent balance sheet. And that's how you know you've done it correctly, is the, the ending cash matches that of the most current balance sheet. Okay, uh, but before we put together a cash flow statement, it's important to understand the difference between income and cash flow. Okay, because income is used in cash flow. Uh, however, there are some changes that um, that will affect the the proportion of our income and how it uh, you know translates into cash flow. So here's an example uh, illustrating the difference between cash flow and income. Okay, so uh, these two um, these two pieces right here, these, these two little statements, are the section of the cash flow that relates to uh, operations or operating activities, 
Okay. Um, so in this example, let's consider we if, let's say we made a hundred dollar sale on account. Okay. So that's an account's receivable. We don't actually have the cash yet. In the oper in this particular section of the cash flow statement, we would show the net income. Okay. So a hundred bucks. But we're also showing an increase in a receivable accounts, and because it's an increase in a receivable account, we subtract that. That's a that's a, a cash outflow or a de de uh, decrease in cash. Okay, so if we do the math here, uh, 100 minus 100, our cash flow from operating activities is zero. Okay, on the other hand, um, if we were to you know collect that $100 in the, in the next period and not have any more sales, we would show a sales of zero, okay? But the decrease in the current asset account, uh, which is accounts receivable, is a, an increase for cash flow. So again, we do the math, zero, um, uh, zero plus 100, we get, uh, we get 100 here, okay? So our cash flow from operations in this case was 100. So the difference between cash flow and income is that all of our income, um, yes, we have to show our income on a cash flow statement. However, uh, we don't receive all of our uh, all of our money or cash from our net income based on you know credit sales or accounts receivable. So in a lot of cases, our cash flow does not increase at the same proportion. Uh, as our as our net income because of credit sales and and uh, other items for example depreciation okay so it's important to understand that just because we have a net income I mean that's great um, our cash is not going to increase at the same rate okay and that's really what we're trying to do we're trying to understand when we're putting together a, a cash flow statement is understand you know how our cash is being generated or how it's being used and where it's exactly where in which operate uh, sorry which activities are contributing more to uh, our cash balance or the change in our cash position so the first section on a cash flow statement is is always uh, our operating activities and how we uh, this is just an illustration of how we put together this particular section of the statement okay um, we take our net income from our our, uh, our income statement okay we then add back the depreciation on the income statement okay and again we're adding that back to cash flow because um, depreciation and amortization are non cash expenses so we yes we do expense them yes they are cost but they we don't actually pay out any money for it okay we then add uh, gains on the sale of assets or subtract uh, any losses on the sale of an asset okay fairly straightforward and then we add cash generated by current assets and current liability accounts or subtract cash used by current assets and current liability accounts. And again, refer to that table um, in the previous slide to show how changes in current assets and current liabilities either generate or use cash. Okay. Uh, and then we, we do the math here. So we take our net income, we add our depreciation, we add or subtract gains or losses on assets, uh, sales of assets, and we add or subtract a cash used or generated by current asset and liability accounts. Uh, and that equals our net cash flows from operating activities. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And then this uh, completes the first section of our cash flow statement. Okay. So um, the first section, as I had mentioned, was operating activities. Uh, second one was uh, financing activities, okay, and the last section is investing, okay. So now we've put together, uh, or we've shown how to put together the uh, operating activities section. In the next slide, I'm going to show you how to put together the uh, financing activities and the investing activities um, sections of the cash flow statement. Uh, so the next two uh, statements are, uh, sorry, statements, sections of a cash flow statement are actually pretty for, uh, straightforward in how changes in various accounts uh, affect cash. Uh, for example, our investing activity section, we are going to record any changes in non-current assets, okay? And typically speaking, increases in non-current assets are uses of cash and decreases, okay, in non-current assets are sources of cash. Okay, uh, think about equipment. Okay, so equipment is a non-current asset. If um, 
if uh, your non-current assets are decreasing, for example, uh, in our example here, equipment, it means you have less equipment and the, the understanding there is that you sold it, okay? So if you sold something, um, you're getting cash for it, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's a source of cash. Whereas if you bought a piece of equipment, okay, so your, your equipment is increasing, which is a non-current asset, um, it's assumed that, you know, that was a use of cash, okay? On the other hand, we have uh, financing activities. This is where we record any changes in the value of non-current liabilities and equity accounts, with the exception of retained earnings, okay? Um, increases in both of these types of accounts uh, are sources of cash. For example, um, if we issued uh, $200,000 of a common stock, okay, so that would be an increase in, in equity. Uh, when we sell those 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 shares, we're getting $200,000 um, for them. That also that so that increases cash. So this is a source of cash. While decreasing um, these accounts, both of them, it is a use of cash. Okay, so if you're if you're for example um, decreasing a mortgage uh, a mortgage loan or just a, a long-term loan, it's assumed here that you've used cash to pay down that loan. Okay, so decreasing non-current liabilities are uses of cash. Okay, it's the sum of or the uh, the net change of all of these activities that when you add them together, you get your net change in your um, in your cash position. If you add that to your beginning balance, it should give you the ending balance of your uh, of your cash. Okay, which you would see on the most current um, balance sheet. Okay, so you look at the cash and the cash balance, it should equal the ending cash on your cash flow statement. So here's some of the information uh, that's needed to uh, construct a cash flow statement. Again, you'll notice that I've got two consecutive period, uh, two consecutive periods of uh, accounting, uh, sorry, accounting, uh, balance sheet information, where I've also calculated the difference between the two periods. So basically the, the absolute change from period two to period one for our cash was $24,000, okay? So you're just doing, you're just subtracting, okay? Um, and you also need an income statement. And the things you wanna get from the income statement is the net income, um, as well as the uh, depreciation here, okay? And then here, there's also some supplemental information relating to um, either the acquisition or um, disposal of, of assets. For example, yeah, you purchased a truck that was financed fully by the manufacturer. Okay, so if it's financed by the full, um, fully by the manufacturer, you're not actually paying any, out any cash, although your uh, non-current assets are increasing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you sold a, a truck that you had um, for $7,000 when the book value was two, um, and yeah, and then uh, the last piece of information you would need here is the um, uh, dividends paid uh, during year two, okay? Um, with all of this information, you can create a cash flow statement and you can practice by yourself if you wish. Uh, we're gonna use this information on Thursday during our seminar to actually con uh, construct uh, a cash flow statement. And uh, sorry, just before I continue on to the next slide here, if you were to construct a cash flow statement based on this information, your, um, at the bottom of your cash flow statement, uh, your ending cash should be equal to the ending cash in year two, which is $75,000. And if it does equal, then you did it right. So here's uh, some more steps, um, or a list of steps in constructing uh, the statement of cash flow, or the cash flow statement. First, we're um, we're gonna I'm gonna separate this into the reporting activities, okay? Um, doo -doo -doo. So each one of these little boxes here are the different activities. Uh, one through four is operating activities. Five is your investing uh, activities, and six is your financing activities. Okay, so once you've identified all those changes, you sum up the cash flows from operations, investing, and financing activities to calculate the net change in cash. Okay, once you've done that, you then add that net change in cash to the beginning balance from, of cash from the previous period to uh, equal the ending cash. Okay, if your ending cash on the cash flow statement, again, uh, equals the ending balance of the most current balance sheet period, then you did it right, okay? So going back over these steps again, for your operating activities, 
okay, so which is one through four here. You start with your net income from the uh, from the balance sheet. You then uh, adjust your net income for non-cash expenses and gains, okay? So um, non-cash expenses are, are added, uh, so are gains. For example, uh, we sold uh, we sold a truck in the previous slide. We some of the information was that we sold a truck uh, during the year, so that would be a gain. Okay, we had a gain there. We would add that, and uh, we add back non-cash expenses such as a depreciation and uh, amortization. Okay. Um, we then recognize the cash inflows and outflows from changes in current assets and current liability accounts. Okay, um, using that table I've provided is pretty helpful. We then, after we've done all that, we sum up all the changes to get the total cash or net cash generated from operations. Okay, once we've done that, we've completed the first section of the uh, cash flow statement. Uh, we can then move on to the investing activities um, section where we uh, do number step number five which is uh, show the changes in the long-term assets um, again uh, typically speaking uh, an increase in a long-term asset is a cash uh, a cash decrease and a decrease in a long-term asset is a uh, is a source of cash Okay, so uh, we add up all those changes and we get the net cash flows from investing activities. Uh, once we've done that, we're good to move on to the next section on the cash flow statement where we identify the changes in long term uh, liability and equity accounts. Again, increases in long term liability and most equity accounts have a positive effect on cash flow, and the vice versa is true. Um, once we've identified all those changes, we add them up. To get our net cash flow generated from financing activities okay um, and then again we add up all the cash flows from each of the activities um, add that number to the beginning balance of our cash and it should equal the ending balance of our cash okay and if it does equal the ending balance of our cash then uh, we've done our uh, we've done a good job constructing our statement of cash flow, and um, we're ready to do some analysis. So here's just an example of uh, what the cash flow statement should look like when you are uh, using the, the information I've given previously. Okay, uh, it also follows the format um, of the previous slide in that uh, these uh, sections here, okay, uh, represent the three sections of the cash flow statement or the changes in our current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, non-current assets, and equity accounts. Okay, here are the net changes, okay, uh, for each of the sections. So um, our operating activities netted us $113,000. Okay, so that generated quite a bit of cash. But our cash from investing activities was negative. Uh, primarily because we purchased some equip equipment here. So we had um, a use of cash by uh, 63,000. And then if we look at our financing activities, uh, we also had uh, a negative cash, but that means, uh, again, we, we used cash in this particular uh, category of activities. And if you look at it, it looks like the majority of our, like while, while we did, um, get more investment or more investors and whereby generate some cash we also paid down a huge chunk of our mortgage okay which uh, and paid dividends which means that we actually used cash or consumed cash from this uh, particular section of activities if we add all those up okay right here we got um, the net increase in cash when we add all these up we get twenty four thousand dollars if we add that to the beginning balance which is fifty one thousand dollars we get our ending cash balance of 75,000. Okay, so again, this should match the ending cash balance on the most recent balance sheet. And if it does, you're good and you've prepared your, um, uh, your cash flow statement correctly. Okay, um, yeah. So basically looking at this, you can see that, you know, the operation is, is, quite, is fairly healthy. So it is generating quite a bit of cash. Um, 
the investing, uh, sorry, the, let me just see here, the investing activities, uh, the reason why that uh, consumed quite a bit of cash was because we purchased equipment, okay, so um, we purchased a non-current asset, which is, you know, a good thing because that means we can continue to generate uh, revenues in, in the future, okay, um, and the only reason why our, in, uh, what is it, financing activities was uh, generated so little cash or well consumed cash is because we paid back a really big chunk of our mortgage payable okay had we not done that our cash uh, would have increased uh, by a lot more okay but again decreasing de uh, long-term debt in the short term is is a use of cash uh, however in the long term it's only going to positively affect our cash from operating activities because it's going to increase our net income by decreasing our interest expense So uh, looking at the cash flow statement, I mean, you can get a good idea of why your or how your cash position has changed from one period to another by looking at the various changes in cash uh, cash from the different activities, you know, uh, operating, financing, and investing. You can also, uh, to give an indication of why your cash position has changed and how, um, you can also uh, do a ratio analysis of cash flow statements. In a lot of cases, they're better indicators of, of you know, business health or liquidity um, or even solvency because when you're doing a ratio of a cash flow statement, A, you're using the business's most liquid um, uh, liquid uh, asset, which is cash, and because cash flow statements cover a span of time, okay, whereas, you know, an income statement is, is um, just uh, the point, uh, one point in time. Okay, so in terms of liquidity, we can calculate a ratio called cash flow from operating activities to current liabilities, which is a better measure of liquidity because the current and quick ratio are based on a single point in time, and it's cash from operations um, that is your most liquid asset. Okay, so how we calculate this ratio is by taking the cash flow from operating activities, okay, and then dividing it by your uh, average current liabilities. Okay, your average current liabilities is um, the current liabilities from period two plus, or sorry, the, uh, yeah, from period two plus your current liabilities from period one divided by two. Okay, um, the general rule here is above two. So the benchmark is above two, which means that your, um, your cash from generated from operations uh, can cover your current liabilities two times. Okay, so, um, that's pretty liquid okay so it means you're 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 in a good liquidity spot and um, you know you're going to be able to cover your short-term obligations quite well uh, that said we can also do some uh, solvency ratio uh, solvency ratio analysis of the cash flow statement so in terms of uh, solvency we can calculate a ratio called cash flow from operating activities to total liabilities Okay, um, and we calculate this by taking again cash flow from operating activities and divide it by the average total liabilities. Um, this is a better measure than total assets to liabilities, um, basically because it it takes into consideration only um, only the uh, the asset that it can pay all of your liabilities and it covers a particular period of time. Okay, so it's 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 uh, over time. Um, the general benchmark here is 20%. So that means that for your business to be healthy in terms of solvency, your cash flow from operations should be around 20%, uh, or at least 20% of your your average total liabilities. Um, um, which means that if you take 20%, okay, multiply it by five, that's 100%, right? It means that over the course of five years, your business is capable of paying off all of your liabilities. Um, which is a good thing, right? So it shows um, your ability to cover not only your short-term debt, but your long-term debt pretty much over the course of uh, over five years, which is, you know, uh, can be a common term in um, loans and uh, things like that. So again, 20% is the benchmark here. Higher is good, but uh, the, the, the very least you're looking for in terms of a solvency ratio is 20%. Another solvency ratio we can calculate is really similar to one we've already talked about. It's cash flow from operate, uh, operating activities to your interest expense. Okay, so how we calculate this is we take our cash flow from operations, we add back our interest expense. 
okay, and then divide it by our interest expense, okay. Uh, the general benchmark here is the higher the better, okay. Uh, if it was less than one, uh, you would be very, very concerned because um, it's cash, not net income that pays your interest expense, right. So uh, if you have a ratio here that's less than one, it means your operating activities uh, the cash generated from your operating activities can't cover your interest expense in, in the future period, which is extremely concerning because that's we have to pay that stuff. Um, both this ratio and the previous one are good indications of uh, solvency and it, uh, same thing with the with the liquidity ratio. Um, these can be used in conjunction with the other ratios we've spoken about. In fact, in a lot of cases, what people do is um, instead of calculating interest coverage, your current or quick, uh, they replace those specific ratios with their equivalent from the cash flow statement. Another use of the uh, cash flow statement, um, we can use the cash flow statement uh, and our understanding of, of how different accounts increase or decrease cash to perform a working capital analysis. Okay, so recall that your working capital is your total current assets minus your total current liabilities. Okay, our working capital is essentially the well is the difference between those two accounts and is that kind of reserve money that you have um, or reserve liquidity you have so that you can do things like grow, uh, invest into inventories, things like that. Okay, um, so we want to understand the changes in our working capital. Um, so that we can better understand uh, what kind of flexibility we have with respect to our cash flow. Okay, uh, working capital analysis tells us, you know, how has our working capital increased or decreased? What kind of flexibility we have? Um, it also, you can identify the cash inflows and outflows um, from various different accounts that are responsible or more responsible for the increases or decreases to working capital. Okay, and uh, you can also, uh, this will help uh, provide lenders with information so that they can make risk judgments about you. Okay, so if you are having, if you're showing, um, you know, why your working capital is increasing, you know what I mean? This can be thought of as less risky in, in terms of, uh, or in comparison, I should say, to having uh, decreases in working capital. And that's what we're going to show you how to do next. So first things first, we have to identify if working capital has changed from one period to another. So year over year or you know whatever period over another period. And how we do that is we take uh, working capital one and we subtract working capital two. Uh, you can even, you're, you're taking whichever one's bigger. If there is a change in working capital, okay, then we need to understand what exactly has led to that change in working capital, okay? Um, to do that, we, we conduct a working capital analysis, uh, and in the process of doing that, we're, we're creating a statement called the Statement of Changes in Working Capital. Now, this statement details all the changes um, in your uh, non-current assets, non-current liabilities, and your equity accounts that have affected um, your working capital, okay, so how it's increased or how it's decreased over time. How we understand and create a statement of changes in working capital um, determine, uh, is determined by um, comparing the business's inflows, which are sources of cash and work, working capital, and outflows, which are uses of working capital and cash. Okay, uh, a source is something that increases cash, like I had said, and uh, a use um, is, you know, like an outflow or a um, uh, uh, how would I call this, a decrease in cash or working capital. We compare these two, the inflows and the outflows, and the net change based on those two items equals the net change to our working capital, okay? So um, we take the cash inflows, okay? So in this case, if we had a $200 cash inflow and we subtract the cash outflows, so if we had a $100 cash outflow, then the net change to our working capital would be $100. Okay, now while we know what the change is, and that's great, where this becomes useful is looking at, you know, what exactly happened in our business that created these cash flows, uh, cash outflows, and what exactly in our business created these uh, cash inflows, which ones were more responsible than others, okay? 
Here are some examples of inflows or sources of working capital. Okay, so income from operations, so net income and even um, uh, our net income uh, that increases retained earnings and thus cash. Uh, increases in depreciation, also increase working capital because it's a non-cash expense, so we add that back. Okay. Uh, decreases in non-current assets, okay, increases cash, very similar to the logic or increases working capital, very similar to the logic that decreases in non-current assets on the cash flow statement also increases cash, okay? Uh, increases in long-term liabilities, increases cash, okay? That's us, you know, for example, going out and getting a loan, that is increasing the cash that we have access to. And lastly, increases in common stock, um, also increase cash because we're getting more cash from issuing more of our, more of our stock. Okay, in the next slide, I'm going to go over examples of uh, cash outflows and uses of working capital. So here are some examples of uses of working capital and or cash. Um, for, uh, one is losses. Okay, so if we have a loss from our operations or a net profit, uh, our net, a net loss on our income state, this reduces cash. Uh, if we have an increase in a non-current asset, so uh, increase in equipment, this reduces cash because we are assuming that some cash was used to purchase it. Uh, we have decreases in long-term liabilities, okay? Um, the reason we're assuming that this reduces cash is because we have to use cash to pay down those long-term liabilities. We also have decreases in common stock, okay? So if we were to um, buy some of our stock back, which is, which is called treasure, uh, treasury stock, we have to use cash to do that. We just don't get it back for nothing, so that reduces cash. Okay, and if we pay dividends uh, to our shareholders, that reduces cash as well because uh, that payment involves uh, us using cash. So again, that reduces cash. All of these changes, so if we take the cash inflows and we subtract the cash outflows, uh, this equals our net change in working capital okay um, and when we've prepared the statement you can go into much more uh, deeper analysis of exactly which items have lend themselves to increased cash through cash inflows or uh, which items uh, or activities that you've engaged in reduced the change uh, in your working capital by uh, looking at the specific cash outflows Okay, uh, this kind of analysis uh, is particularly useful when you have a, uh, a net, a negative net change in your working capital. You would want to look at the cash outflows, um, you know, to see which ones have contributed more towards that negative change. So in uh, creating a statement of change uh, working capital, you need a couple of things to actually get it done. Okay, uh, very similar to, uh, to a cash flow statement. Uh, first is you need two consecutive periods of, of balance sheets, excuse me. Uh, you need one income statement for the current period, a statement of retained earnings, and on any other information not fully disclosed in any of these statements. Okay, so this can come from looking at the notes uh, on financial statements. Once we have um, these four things and an understanding of, you know, uh, how, to, uh, how to create it, we can or the logic that governs the creation of a statement of change working capital, we can begin to, uh, to create one, which is what we're going to do on, um, on Thursday during our seminar, but I'm going to show you what one looks like today. So here's an example. Okay, so uh, first we list all of our cash uh, inflows. So we have our net income, our depreciation. We then add any decreases in non-current assets. And in this case, with the information that I had, I, we didn't have any. We then add any increases in uh, long-term liabilities. Again, in this case, we didn't have any. But we did issue, uh, or we did have an increase in common stock where we issued $5,000 worth of, of, of shares. If we add all that, all that up, we get $23,000 uh, worth of um, cash inflows or cash, uh, yeah, cash inflows for our working capital. Okay, but uh, we're not done. We got to look at our cash outflows. So uh, I'm taking, we had dividends during that year. I, I, then you need to add any increases in non-current asset accounts. You also have to add decreases in um, long-term liability accounts 
and also add decreases in common stock accounts. Okay, you then add them all up. Okay, you then take your current, uh, sorry, your um, your total, um, oops, your total cash inflows, subtract your total cash outflows, and you get the net change in working capital. So what this means is that your working capital from one period to another has changed or increased by $4,000, which is, which is a good thing, okay? But um, if you calculate the percentage, uh, the percentage to total, I'm, I'm not sure why I put change there, percentage to the total, um, you can start to kind of uh, pick apart this statement and kind of figure out which um, which uh, changes uh, uh, was responsible for uh, the majority of the change in working capital. For example, here in our cash outflows, uh, a, a big source of cash or a big source of working capital is our depreciation. Okay, the second largest uh, source of cash for us is our net income. Okay, or our operations. Okay, on the other hand, um, our biggest use of working capital in this case was uh, we uh, decreased long-term liabilities by ten thousand dollars or 50 per, 53 percent of the total usage okay um, and then also uh, increased non-current asset accounts okay if you if you go back and look at the statements one of the big changes in your non-current liability accounts was you you actually paid down your your mortgage by a hundred fifty thousand okay so that is a huge um, that's, a, that's a really, uh, a fairly, um, what's that called? A fairly large uh, use of cash. Uh, and that's also being seen here on our statement of changes. Okay. So again, we are going to uh, use uh, some of the information uh, presented in those, those statements to create a statement of working change, a statement of changes to working capital on Thursday. Uh, in our next slide, I'm going to show you how you can anticipate uh, and changes that are going to be needed to your working capital. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna erase this here because I took out an example I wanted to give. So uh, in some cases um, we need to determine um, what the, a certain level of required working capital in order to grow. Okay, we do this um, by trying to keep a current ratio of 1.5. So that's um, that means our, our current assets are 1.5 times uh, our current liabilities. OK, now, if you are if you're trying to grow, OK, um, growing your business takes money. Right. Um, because we understand we don't we don't pay our costs right away. It creates payables. Any kind of growth is going to result in a, an increase in current liabilities. Right. Uh, we can see this through. Uh, wages payable, accounts payable, um, um, various other payables that we would have as a result of growing. For example, if you um, if you wanted to open up, a, you know, if you wanted to renovate your restaurant and put in, you know, an extra, make your restaurant bigger, you know what I mean? You would obviously need more staff to cover that amount of tables. Um, with the increased capacity, you would also need to order more inventory, right? So your, your working capital is going, the required working capital to do that is going to increase, okay? So let's say our current working capital is uh, $200, okay? And this is just a, just a random example, okay? We want to keep a current ratio of 1.5, okay? So let's say uh, if our, I'm just going to grab my calculator here, our working capital right now is $200, okay? Um, if we, um, okay, let's not, let's not start that way. That's a little confusing. Okay, let's say our current assets are, uh, current assets are currently 250 and our current liabilities are uh, 150. Uh, sorry, just one second here too. Uh, and our current liabilities are 150. Okay, so where our working capital is currently, um, uh, what it looks like 100 bucks. There we go. So we're just subtracting our current liabilities from our current assets, and our current ratio, current 
current ratio is equal to uh, 1.66. I think I did that right. That seems odd to me. Yeah, so it's 1.66. So we've got a good current ratio. Okay, but now let's say we were going to renovate our restaurant and, and make it bigger, right? And we were anticipating um, an increase in our current liabilities of uh, $100. So our current liabilities are now $150, uh, sorry, $250 based on the estimated increase in our wages payable and our, our accounts payable. Okay, so okay, so we've got a current liability of, of $250. If we wanted to understand what kind of working capital we need to do to make this happen we take our current liabilities we multiply it by 1.5 okay so when we do that in this case uh, 250 multiplied by 1.5 we need current assets of uh, 375 okay uh, what this means is that if we take 375 divided by 250, we get a current ratio of 1.5. And if we calculate our new working capital, um, which is our current assets, so 375, just doing this on the calculator right now, minus 250, we need a working capital of uh, 125. Okay, so that's our new level of working capital. Um, in order for to make this happen, okay uh we need to invest more into our business okay so right now uh before we do this our working capital right now is is a hundred okay we have to be able to finance the additional uh sort of the increase in our current assets from uh 250 to 375 and uh which will give us the difference in our working capital okay to make that happen so if we take 375 uh, minus uh, do, 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 uh, 250, we get 125, and that is the amount of working capital uh, that we need to invest in to the business in order to have good working capital, but also maintain our current ratio of uh, 1.5 times, okay? That was just a quick example. We're going to go over another on uh, Thursday during our seminar, and I think that's all I have uh, for this particular video. Uh, in this video, I wanted you to un be able to understand uh, why we use the cash flow statement and what it can be used for the various purposes, uh, the three sections, uh, and how changes in uh, balance sheet accounts create changes in our cash position. Okay, We did... Um, uh, show a few ratios that you can calculate and do an analysis of your cash flow statement and we also showed you how to uh, start to pull together a statement of changes to your working capital and determine the required amount of working capital uh, for changes in your organization for example growth okay on Thursday we're going to be going uh, we're going to be creating a cash flow statement we're going to be creating a statement of changes to cash flow uh, we're going to be doing some calculations based on some ratios, and we're going to go over another example like this. Okay, so thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you on Thursday.